Hey everybody, this is Jason Creel and this is the Lawn Care Life. Today I'm going to be talking to you about my Graham spray rig. I had a guy the other day asked me a question. He said, Jason, I'm thinking about getting in the lawn care business. Should I get into mowing or weed control and fertilization? So lawn maintenance or, or weed control and fertilization. I, I said, well, to me it just depends on your personality, but there's some pros and cons to both. I've done both. Um, but today I want to talk to you about weed control and fertilization. I want to talk to you about uh, the main piece of equipment I'm using for that is my Graham spray rig and I want to go over the rig in detail But I want you to try to emphasize a point you might have seen on the thumbnail of the video But it's the return on investment ROI and I think a Graham spray rig is going to be one of um, The biggest returns you're going to get for a piece of equipment in the lawn care industry At least it has been for me So I'm going to go over that in detail talk to you about my setup and how I utilize it for my business and hopefully it'd be helpful to you if you're in the weed control fertilization business or maybe you're thinking about getting into that, uh, you could do so. Graham is a regular sponsor on the channel and of course appreciate their support. But I like to tell people I was a Graham customer before they were a sponsor. Uh, this is the rig that I bought when I started my weed control and fertilization company. Here's my rig. Some of you follow my story. I've been I mowed grass for a long time, and and that was good. I'm not anti mowing. I, I like mowing grass. I think it is a great business opportunity. Um, but I, when I got to ready to do something a little bit different, I was I was mowing and spraying, um, and now now I'm basically just do weed control and fertilization. And when I decided to do that, I, I had a friend who, who's become a mentor to me in the industry, and he told me to go to Graham and get a, um, get a rig. And so this is the one I bought. And he uh, really emphasized the importance of a split tank. So let me just tell you a little bit about uh, my setup. Now, you, they, it's all kind of setups, okay? I've got an F-350 flatbed. I like a flatbed. You can get the Zuzu cab over. Uh, NPR flatbeds, you know, and all that and have more room on it and you can use a standard pickup bed or you can put a rig on the back of a trailer um, and pull it with a truck, you know, so there's a lot of different ways to do it. But um, this is has become my setup is this flatbed because it gives me a lot of room and I can put a bunch of fertilizer back there. Now, obviously, if you got an NPR uh, Zuzu with a uh, big bed, you, there's a lot of room there too. And there's room on those. You can have uh, multiple tanks and things like that. I wasn't trying to get the most basic setup possible. I was pretty committed to doing this for a living and um, it was my third lawn care business. So I wanted to get something nice that was going to last. So this is a 400 gallon split tank. So on this right side, it, you can see the, the little uh, numbers on the side that's basically just a sticker in that tube and so it, that side holds actually 310 gallons but i call it just 300 and the other side holds 105 gallons and we just call it 100 so it's like 300 on the right side 100 on the left side and you probably see these uh, yellow valves right here there's the one that's turned that way and then those two are pointed up when i have it set like that it's pulling from the small side now if i took those two on the right and flip those down it's going to start pulling from this side so the way it works for me um, is I will have, uh, and this is where the split tank comes in in a lot of variety of situations. So the way I've got it set up right now, let's just give you an example. I'm out here spraying and I've got a pre and post emergence uh, spraying weeds. And so on the right side, I've got it mixed to come uh, to spray out of this uh, green gun right here. So this is a let's go grunt gun. I've got mine where it sprays about two gallons per thousand square feet. I've got the green tip on the nozzle. Got the reel here with automatic wind up, which is unbelievable. You know, you don't want to be hand winding these things. So, um, and I, another reason I like the flatbeds because it gives me room to mount backpack sprayers and things like that. So, um, so on this right side, the large side, that's if I'm spraying out of, out of the gun. Uh, and that's what I do a lot of times. Now, there's some situations where I might use a, a uh, ride-on spreader sprayer. I've got a couple ride-on spreader sprayers. You see, I got this one decked out with some of my favorite stickers, Harold, Spiker, Toro, Lawn Care Nut, and Lawn Care Life, and just kind of personalize a little bit. Um, but uh, this machine here sprays a lot lower volume than my actual spray rig. So what I've got it set up is on the small side, I've got it mixed for this machine. So this machine's a, a quarter of an ounce per thousand square feet. That is two gallons per thousand square feet on the right side. So it's the same chemical mix on both sides of my tank, but the, the one on the left side is eight times more concentrated. 
okay? Because it, this is spraying eight times more volume out of the, the spray rig than out of this machine. So where does that come in handy? So um, you gotta be careful. I don't wanna spray eight times more concentrated on the lawn out of the spray rig. That would not be good. Uh, same time, I don't wanna spray uh, one eighth the concentration it needs out of this machine because it's probably not gonna kill any weeds, okay? So what I do, I take blue dye and put in the left side here. Now you might can see right now I've got about um, 30 gallons, if you can see that little site too, about 30 gallons in there. And it's, I put just a hint of blue dye. So you can see it's blue in the tank, just barely blue. Just enough blue to be able to see it. I'm not trying to smurf up the lawn, if you know what I mean. These people paint their lawns blue and all that. Just enough to be able to tell the difference. So the right side is, is basically clear and the left side it has a bluish tint. So what I'll do, if I'm spraying in this machine, I've got those valves flipped up I'm spraying in machine is blue let's say I get to a, a little yard and I don't want to use my machine I'm going to spray it with the um, the rig then I'm going to flip those two valves down and then I'm going to spray it once I flip those two valves down it's now pulling from the large side of the tank so then I'm going to spray the hose back into the small side of the tank while it's still blue I'm, I'm clearing all the, the liquid out of the hose okay as soon as it's not blue and it turns clear then I know now I'm spraying from the large side of the tank, I'm safe to spray it on that lawn. Let's say I want to flip it back, then I flip those two valves up again, then I start I spray it clear back into the big tank, and uh, once it turns blue, boom, I'm at the eight times concentrated, uh, which is what I've got it calibrated for this machine, so then I'm going to spray it back in the machine. So that's how the split tank works. Now how else can you use that? It's not just for a ride on spreader sprayer, uh, it may be a situation like early in the year, uh, let's say springtime, okay? And I've, I'm spraying pre-emergent on my uh, regular customer's lawns I've been taking care of. But let's say I get a new customer and I need to put some, some extra products in, in the small side of the tank for any new sign-up I get. You know, I might have to try to kill some baby crabgrass, but on the, on the new customers, I'm not uh, really concerned about crabgrass because I've already put a pre-emergent out before the crabgrass. So I might have some extra products over here in this tank that I don't have in that tank. Uh, basically the same mix with maybe one extra product on the left side. And so I add the blue dye and that way if I get a new sign up, boom, I flip the valves over, I'm spraying out of the, the small side. If I'm spraying my regular old customers, boom, I'm spraying out of the big side. Uh, another example, let's say I'm, uh, I've got centipede and St. Augustine lawns, which I do, and I, but most of my yards are Bermuda zoysia. Well, from a treatment standpoint, a lot of times my Bermuda zoysia lawns are treated virtually the same. The centipede St. Augustine uh, lawns are, are treated the same. A lot of things you spray on Bermuda zoysia, you can't spray on centipede and St. Augustine. So I'm going to put the Bermuda zoysia mix on the right side, the centipede St. Augustine on the left side. and might use a little blue dye, and so I'll know the difference. If you lived in a transition zone, you might have Bermuda zoysia stuff on this side. You might have a turf type tall fescue on the left side. You know, it's, it's gonna be very important not to mix those products. So it's very handy to have the split tanks. Not necessary, um, but certainly is handy and I use it very often. Now, a little bit more about my rig. Mine's got a Honda engine here, so I just crank it on this side. Uh, it has got a bean pump on mine pumps uh, it, it are more expensive I'll just go ahead and tell you um, but what I was told when I bought it was that these are going to last a really long time with low maintenance so I for me personally I was willing to pay more on the front end to get the bean pump and it very low maintenance okay so I just I'm not a handy kind of guy I don't like fixing stuff and I'm not necessarily the best on maintenance so I wanted something that was going to be low maintenance even if it cost more on the front end now it doesn't mean that the other types of pumps are bad. I think uh, a lot of times that they'll put a, a high pro diaphragm pump on there, probably a little bit more maintenance involved, um, but definitely at a, a lesser cost. And, and those are certainly good pumps that can be used also, but I'm just uh, talking through my particular spray setup on this rig. One other thing to mention is sometimes, uh, now I'm able to keep mine inside a, a closed building during the winter so I don't have to winterize it, but sometimes if you do have to winterize it, I've got these valves right here that I can open up to drain the liquid out of the pump uh, in that situation. 
which makes it easy to you know to winterize my rig if it have to be left out in the weather over the winter now obviously putting it inside is a better option personal preference on the hose size now i, I forget it seemed like when i first got this it might have had a half inch diameter hose and this might be three eighths i may be getting those numbers right but i believe that's correct i like the lesser diameter hose for a few reasons one i think you still get plenty of volume so i don't i don't think that's an issue like i said i've spraying about two gallons per thousand square feet uh, another reason is it fits on this hose reel better. So when it was a, a, a larger hose size, it would fit on here. But I, you, you see my hose is, is wrapped up fairly neat, but not perfect. You know, it was like I had to have it really neat to get it to fit on there um, because it would, it would fill up the hose reel uh, faster when it was a larger hose diameter. And a third, maybe most important reason for me is when you're dragging the hose around it's just lighter because it's smaller and the hose is not that heavy but all the liquid inside of it, it's not it's not a big deal but when you got 200 feet of hose stretched out or going walking up a hill lighter is better in my opinion so i prefer um, the smaller diameter hose for your hose reel just quickly running over my rig real quick here's my truck got a box here got a box mount under there that i got from graham i've got these wooden boxes built here where i can put little handheld sprayers for spot treating right on spreader sprayer on this rack that uh, it comes in very handy the reel over here got two backpack sprayers so i got a lot of stuff on here plenty of room for fertilizer got a little chest mounted spreaders in here got a little handheld blower in case i need to blow uh, fertilizer off the sidewalk or things like that so uh, it's powered by honda engines been very reliable i'll be honest one of the great things i've had uh, experience with at graham this not because i just work with them on youtube um, but when i have a difficulty if anything goes wrong it's typically something minor but i can call them up and they uh, definitely stand behind their products so they put me on the phone with donnie or chad or some of those guys that been know more about spray tanks than just about anybody you're going to meet and they've they've been building these things for years and they know the ins and outs of them and typically they can tell me it's something simple so for instance one year i let it sit up over the winter and i think i ended up having to take this off and there were some parts in there i had to loosen up or maybe i had to, the regulator i had to take it off and, and clean out some stuff uh, after it had been sitting up for a while so it's, it's typically something simple the maintenance on it i mean you got the honda engine you know a spark plug oil change things like that and there's a grease fitting uh, i don't know if you can see it back behind these behind this belt and uh, grease that and also a grease fitting on this side that goes through the shaft that runs through the tank so mine has got mechanical agitation on the large side it's got jet agitation on the left side there's also one grease fitting right here on the hose reel so i hope that gives you an overview it doesn't mean you have to go out and buy the exact tank that i've got exact setup they, they will customize it for you so you may want an auxiliary tank to go do tree and shrub applications or something like that so um, just tell them what you want and let them build it for you but i thought it might be helpful for some of you to see what i have and to kind of go over in detail how I'm using it for my weed control and fertilization business. So as far as return on investment, you know, again, there's nothing wrong with buying a lawnmower and going cutting grass. I, that, I think that is absolutely fantastic. But this particular rig, now I'm sure, um, I, I don't even want to quote a price on what it cost me, but years ago, I might've paid 11, $12,000 and I imagine it's a little more than it is than that now. And that was with uh, the exact setup I have. But when you think about the amount of money that this particular rig makes, and it's, I tell people all the time, it's not a big deal at all to generate $1,000 a day in the weed control and fertilization business, and not really very uncommon at all to generate $1,500. And I'm talking about a solo operator out there. Uh, I can consistently do 20 to 25 yards in a day. Now I have a lot of small yards and things like that close together, tight route. Um, th it's not all just uh, perfect and everything's going to work out great from the very beginning. But it is a very much a money-making piece of equipment because you're out there spraying yards. The, you want your equipment reliable because the cash is there once you start building your business. And to me, it's worth getting a piece of equipment that's going to keep you out there in the field so you're not going to have to worry about um, dealing with problems and maintenance issues all the time. I'm Jason Creel. Appreciate you watching the video. There's over 900 videos on the channel. Been on YouTube for over 11 years. 
And so appreciate you guys' support. Leave me a comment if you got a question, or you can go check them out, GrahamSE.com. They've got all kind of rigs available. Check out their portfolio, and we'll see you guys in the next video.